Hey, pushers, uh, Dr. Killo here again, talking about Chapter 36 and the cultural renaissance of the 1950s. Uh, basically, in the 1950s, America's economy is doing great. We had just won World War II, and countries around the world copied our culture. Um, we kind of exported that along with everything else we were exporting at the time economically. And so uh, it becomes very popular. It's kind of like the uh, the heyday of America. It's the renaissance, as, as it says here. Um, so get into it. Um, so you're going to see that we have uh, we become we have, it's a golden age of art, music, poetry, literature, just all kinds of cool things, uh, cool things. And uh, one example of that is like uh, with art. You'll see art, abstract art becomes very popular. Andy Warhol, uh, stuff like that, lots of color. Uh, here's an example. Uh, this looks like somebody ripped off Picasso, but whatever. Um, it looks like a comic strip, right? Yeah, very very popular thing at the time. Yeah, comics in the 1950s are huge, huge stuff. So we call this thing in the 1950s pop art, short for popular art. Um, it becomes a very popular thing. You know, uh, Americans are into this sort of stuff. And, and again, around the world, it's true as well. Uh, architecturally, uh, American styles of architecture with skyscrapers, you know, take over the world, um, becomes very popular. We already talked about, you know, in America, our houses, at least, and neighborhoods are, are very... Um, um, uh, what's the term for it again? Um, or we built them all the same. Well, whatever. Uh, we, but our houses are all very much a cookie cutter. Uh, that tiny boxes, that song you read, they're, they're all the same. Uh, because it was easy to do that. Uh, just make them everywhere. Um, oh, Levitt Town. Levitt style houses. That's what I meant to say. All right. Um, some of the people you may uh, recognize here. Frank Lloyd Wright, I'm sure you've all heard of. Architecturally, he becomes very popular at the time. Um, along with some other people. Um, okay, so literature, I think, is where you're going to see that one of the biggest impacts uh, of the time period. Um, uh, people, uh, so, uh, books like Catch Twenty Two, Slaughterhouse Five. These are, you know, if you were you took your American Lit class, you'll notice that a lot of the books are from the 1950s. It is the heyday. Uh, Hemingway, uh, very popular writer at the time. Um, so one of the things that comes out of this decade, we talked about the greasers before with rock and roll being their thing. Um, the other big anti-establishment uh, uh, counterculture movement of the 1950s are the beats, the beatniks. Okay? And these guys are more intellectual than the, the greasers. The greasers are your, you know, they're hardcore, what you call hammers back in the 1980s. They're, they're, they're not your more academic people. Beatniks are academics. They are intelligent. Um, I guess what conservatives would call egghead type people. Um, they they questioned materialism. Um, they didn't like the way America's culture was going. Their idea of a good time is sitting around a, a smoke-filled room, um, listening to poetry, jazz music, and probably doing some acid, which was a big thing back in the 1950s, the beginning of LSD and stuff like that. Um, so this becomes a popular thing. They're called beats, beatniks, okay? Um, so one of the famous ones, John Updike, you may have heard of, famous American art author, um, Gord Vidal. Um, okay, so these are people you may, may recognize. So here I have a cartoon. Now, I love this cartoon, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Uh, this came out, uh, other cartoons with it are, uh, um, what's his name, the Underdog. Love these cartoons. This is one that kind of makes fun of beatniks, which is surprising because this whole cartoon is kind of a beatnik cartoon to, be, to begin with. It's almost like, the first time I saw this, I was offended. <laughs> but I think they're really just making fun of themselves and the image that people have of them. So as you watch this, um, you, you'll like it. You can tell it's very Cold War, too, because you have Boris and Natasha. This is Boris. They're supposed to be Soviet spies in America. It's, it's all a very much a Cold War cartoon. Some other cartoons you may know that are very beatnikish. Um, Woody Woodpecker from the 1950s. There are some uh, Tom and Jerry cartoons that are very beatnikish. Um, uh, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown's a very beatnik uh, time, especially Linus, the piano playing guy. Very the whole theme song, very beatnikish. Um, so a lot of cool stuff comes out of this time period. But again, these folks are intellectuals. Okay, they're not. They're not like in 1960. You have hippies that maybe aren't as intellectual. Beatniks are intellectual. Okay, they're not. They're not your running mill morons. Um, all right, so this is a guy named um, uh, Jack Kerouac, who's kind of like the, the main beatnik poetry guy in the 1950s. His style is that there's no rules. He just, it's train of thought. 
whatever's coming to his mind is what he's going to say, and he makes it all it's poems, but nothing rhymes. Um, I have an interview coming up here I want you to see. Uh, this is the book he writes back in the 1950s, Jack Kerouac, very popular uh, poetry book at the time. But uh, this interview, this interview is so beatnikish. With the guy, the guy who's doing the interview is playing the piano as he's asking questions, <laughs> very jazzy. And Jack Kerouac's on the other side. He's going to recite some poetry for you. It really is a cool interview. If you want to see what the 1950s was like, and it's in color, it's kind of cool. But check it out. It's a, uh, it's really kind of entertaining. Um, all right, so these are uh, um, Jack Kerouac and some of his fr friends. Um, uh, of 1950s, probably down in uh, Gre uh, uh, Greenwich Village, New York, is probably one of the headquarters of the Beatnik movement at the time. All right, so uh, some more characteristics of the writing and stuff like that. Uh, it says, all right, so um, they began to push the boundaries of, of conformity in the 1950s. So just like we talked about, there was Playboy in the 1950s. These guys in their poems and in their books are talking more about subjects that were not supposed to be talked about in public, sex, drugs, uh, mental illness, um, criticisms of America's foreign policy and culture, all that stuff is what these folks are, are writing about in the 1950s. Um, plays are probably where you're going to recognize most of these names. Uh, uh, A Streetcar Named Desire, great play. Again, if you have uh, Ms. Friedman's class uh, and you guys read this sort of stuff, I love doing that in her class. It's so much fun. Um, Streetcar Named Desire, great, great play. Death of a Salesman, another great one. Arthur Miller, love him. He was also on... Uh, McCarthy's blacklists of uh, subversive uh, people in Hollywood. The Crucible, which is actually the play that's about the uh, McCarthy hearings. Um, great job of that. Love that play. Good stuff. Uh, A Raisin in the Sun, Civil Rights Movement, another great play of the time. Uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, you may have heard of. Uh, Catcher in the Rye. These are, these are books and, and plays and stuff that I'm sure you guys know. They're great stuff. Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird comes out. G.J. Harper Lee just came out with her sequel. Uh, I didn't read it, but it was kind of like the opposite of To Kill a Mockingbird, where, I don't know, I like To Kill a Mockingbird, but uh, she was kind of lost her reputation when she came out with this thing. Right before she died, she came out with a new book. Whatever. Um, okay, so what else? Uh, Harlem Renaissance. Uh, black authors are still writing in the 1950s, building on what they did in the 1930s. Um, James Baldwin's a guy I actually like a lot in his readings. Very critical of American culture towards race in America. It's it's good stuff. Uh, again, the civil rights movement is kind of is starting in the 1950s, so you're going to see these folks again being very critical of the way things are are going in America at that time. Um, so the Southern, Southern Renaissance. Ugh, I don't know. The South they just they struggle. So it's kind of like. They're getting past their I'm a victim from the Civil War mentality, although I think they still have that to some extent. Um, but uh, William Faulkner's writing books in the 1950s about the South that is that is somewhat critical of their own history, which is kind of good stuff. Um, he receives a Nobel Prize for literature for doing that. Um, yeah, good story here uh, talking about Huey Long. If you remember, Huey Long was the one of uh, the demagogues in the 1930s that was critical of FDR. Huey Long, talk about a communist. This is this guy's a communist, uh, but uh, I don't think they called it that back then. Uh, anyway, um, some more civil rights stuff. Nat Turner, there's a story about Nat Turner, which is good. Uh, you have Jewish authors that are very popular at the time. Um, I think I read The Assistant, but I don't quite remember it. But uh, it's, again, some good good literature this time period. It is it is it is the apex of American culture, um, and again, we're exporting it around the world. So again, in the 1950s, you can summarize the 50s. You'd have to say that. We America, it's the height of America. We economically, we are the most powerful we're going to be, uh, without without any other competition. Now, obviously, today's economy is bigger than it was in the 1950s, but in the 50s, we didn't have any competition. We were it. I mean, we we controlled the world. Uh, um, we um, culturally, we were we were the epicenter of the world. Everybody wanted to be like America. Everybody around the world loved Americans. Uh, you know, even even our enemies respected us, and uh, that's why I think a lot of baby boomers today they want to go back they want to make america great they're talking about the 1950s because it was their childhood it's when america was great and but what they're missing is that there's also a lot of negative stuff going on in america at that time I and mean, we have a civil rights movement for a reason because we are not living up to uh the principles we talk about in our declaration of independence in our constitution so we've got that going on you know women aren't being treated well uh, it's a great decade if you're a white man but most decades are great if you're a white man um you know we have we have a lot of issues going on in the 50s, and uh, our foreign policy is just atrocious. Where we're 
exporting, uh, we're not exporting, we are propping up, uh, you know, dictators all over the world so we can continue to get tr cheap uh, resources so that we can continue to live the lifestyle we're living and, and do it as cheaply as possible. So, again, there's a lot of great things that are going on in the 50s, and there's a lot of things that aren't so great going on in the 1950s. Um, but again, people, when you get older, you tend to remember your youth as the good old days, now, just I'm sure as you guys will when you guys get older. Um, but right now, those, those old people, we call them boomers, and they want to go back to the way it was in the 50s. So hope you enjoyed this. Um, and next time I see you guys, we'll be getting in the 1960s, probably talking a little bit of Kennedy and, and stuff like that. So thank you very much, and I will catch you all later.